This is Tracy Wooten. I'm an instructional designer with Bluegrass Communion Technical College. And I am going to be talking about how to create custom banners for your ultra courses. There, and there may be a few things that you want to consider before you begin creating your course banners. And that is what images that you're going to use on your course banner, what color you're going to use for your banner, and what titles you're going to use for your banner. Now, I created my banners using the um, KCTCS system uh, template outline, and I'll show you how I access those in a few minutes. I believe there is 45 to 52 labels, and you may use less or you may create more once you find out how to create your own banners. I will say try to be consistent You're using it in all the course and just because you can create your own banners, don't put different color banners in your same course. Use one color banner throughout the course. So we'll get started on how to create custom banners. The first step is you want to collect the images that you want to use. And that's this image right here that I'm talking about. BCTC has their own set of logos that's been approved by their marketing. So check with your local uh, logo best suits the campus that you're working at. And also, uh, I'll show you how to select images from Google. It's a little bit different if you just want to select an image. For instance, if we're going to select this image here, When you're selecting images from Google, you want to be sure that you're not doing any copyright laws, breaking any of those. So you want to select tools, and you want to select it here. You can't just use that image if it's a copyright law. And how you can find that out is when you select tools, usage right, you do creative common license. That way you do not break any common right laws, and those are for, there for everyone to use. If you use all, then these two are in displaying, and you might use one of these that are copyrighted. So you've got to be on creative and common license. As you can see, it took that one. We can also change to any type, which will give us um, different images. Or if you're just looking for a clip art, which mainly I do when I'm personalizing something, and you can look for transparency, black and white backgrounds, any colors. So if you select transparency, what happens is your images that you select will not have a background. It will be this checkered um, background scene that tells you that that's transparent. So you can save this one. And I have some math already saved, so I'm going to call this one Math 2. I just kind of like keeping my... Uh, folders organized as I work instead of just saving the image. If I do math 1, math 2, math 3, math 4, then all my math images are going to be the same. So that's how you find a transparency one. If you do not get a transparency one and they're any color, as you see I still got creative common license up, and the background, let's try to find one with a background that is white this one for instance. What happens is when you save this one, and I'm going to save this one just so you can see later what I'm talking about. We'll call it Math 3. And one thing here to remember too, I'm going to go back to this. You want to make sure this is a JPEG. Sometimes a ping file, a PNG, and a bitmap will not transfer as easily or will be distorted in their pixels. A JPEG seems to always be a common one to um, use and embed. So make sure that you're aware of that when you go to save it. And the other thing here is I'm going to split my screen just a few minutes and get a background remover. So it's remove.bg and I usually just put uh, BK remover really quick and it pulls it up for me. And what you do is you just go ahead, you can't pull, let me back up just one second here. 
you can't pull this image from here sometimes it will bounce back because the image is not big enough so if the image is not big enough what you want to do is uh, click on it one time and then pull it and you want to click download after that happens and you can select as many of those as you want and what happens when you do a download these as you notice it's got download remove and it is a ping file download in ping and that's okay uh, sometimes they work well sometimes they don't you can also do a full image so let me put that one back over here and enlarge my screen and go okay so that's how you select images from Google whether it be a transparency background or a solid background and to remove your backgrounds. Now, here's the reason that you want to remove your backgrounds. Let's for instance say that you're gonna use this picture image here and as you can see, it's the solid one. And when you're resizing your pictures to fit on, make sure that you pull from the corners always when in anything that you use when you do an image because if you try to use the image left to right as you can see it messes with the uh, dimensions of your picture and the only time you want if you want to get a good all well rounded image you want to pull from the corners so here's what happens if you don't take the background out of them you get this big square block and it's not very appealing if you want to use square blocks then use square blocks all throughout your banners if you per uh, that is in the sandbox shell that they started with, you'll need to remove the background. So that's why you want to move the background. So let's get one that the background image is gone. Let's try this download removable that we did. And as you can see, let me move this icon out of the way. As you can see, the image fits in there very well. So that's how you select your images. That will be the first thing that you want to do. You want to put in your banners um, saved to your computer. So now that we got our images saved, we want to create our banners. And to create a banner, you want to open up PowerPoint. And I'm just going to use this one instead of opening up a new one. But I do want to tell you that I prefer to use the PowerPoint app instead of the OneDrive to create my custom banners. Once I get all my banners created, then I do upload that color banner to a file in OneDrive so it's easy access through my Ultra course. So open up PowerPoint app and click the design and then in the toolbar choose slide size and you'll see standard widescreen and custom we're going to go to custom and we're going to do a 10 by 1.8 now what that does is it gives us the exact dimensions that we need. if you've already tried to use a banner and you've had to adjust the image and it's been too short or it's been left-sided or right-sided or it's been in the center and it's got spaces below it or above it, this will take care of that. This dimension will fit perfectly into your ultra banner. You don't want to select portrait because otherwise it's going to look like a um, bookmark instead of a banner. And you're just going to simply put OK. I do select ensure fit. And as you can see, it took my banner down to a perfect width. So I'm going to manipulate these words just a little bit to use for our banner. Uh, I'm going to bring this title down here to the bottom. And PowerPoint's really good because it gives you alignment lines to customize everything. Make sure you've got it level. Uh, I'm going to enlarge this to fit the top of the banner. And now we're going to talk about headers and body. When you're creating a banner to use for a header, 
They used headers with a wider width at the top and the body banners with a, a slim line banner. And I'll show you the difference here in a minute. So let's move this image in this one. And again, same thing. If you drag from the top, bottom, left, or right, you're going to get an oval. So if we pull strictly from the right corner, we're going to get that circle. Now, like I said before, if you're going to use a square, just be consistent in all the banners. If you're in math, maybe you wanted to use the math icon. Or maybe if you just want to do an overall uh, one for school, you just want to use your school logo. That's fine, too. And I can send you a list of labels that is in the typical shell, but I'll show you also how to access those later. Um, let's do course overview for this one. And let's make this a little bigger. Now, there is your first banner for your course. So what you strictly do here is you just duplicate this slide as many times as you headers that you need. So if you needed 10 headers, you do duplicate it 10 times. If you need 20, do it 20 times. Then all you'd have to go back and do is to change the title of what you want it to say. So this one could be calendar. This one could be assignment. And so forth until you get as many labels as you need. Like I said earlier, there's like 45 titles in the uh, KCTC um, standard banners. So now let's just pretend that we've got all of our headings done and we want to do our body. And what a body banner is, is the banners that you use underneath your headers. And they simply just have a smaller line. So this may say, uh, watch this and then this one may say let's do three of these too but you you're, you'll have more I mean you'll have probably 20 of these too uh, read this watch this uh, do this and let's do one more because usually what happens here is you can write end here and let's insert when now here's another image you can do if you do stock images from PowerPoint you don't have to worry about copyright laws because they are there for you to use um, free sometimes you may or may not find you just have to go through them and see you know if that's what you want Okay, so we can't get check marks from these images. And if you can't find a check mark in these images that you like, which there should be, but if not, you can always go out to Google and get the one you want. And two, make sure you use tools, make sure you use common uh, creative common license. And then you can pick the colors that you want. It really doesn't matter about these as long as you pick, if you pick a check mark, don't do a different check mark for every blue one. Don't do a different blue for every blue uh, banner that you're going to use for the ones that I like using. And again, if it is not uh, have a transparency background you can always remove that background and I'll show you why I want a check mark I make this bigger pull back up this insert from my device put that in there I move this one over here and I want to say too that you can layer these 
by going back to front. So if you get an image, the white circle didn't show up, I can always send it to back to front. And what I mean by that is if this image was over top of my image and I'm like, I know it's there. When I move it, I see it. So you can right click and send that to the back. And as you know, it sent it behind the blue one. So I'd right click on it one more time and tell it to come forward just one. And then that way it layers it on your images. So that marks the end of my page. And I'll show you how that comes into play in Ultra. So let's pretend that you have all your titles done for your headers and your body banners and your end banner. So now it's time to download them to put them in our Ultra course. So you're going to click File, Save As, and we're going to name them. I'm just going to call them a demo blue banner. That way I can tell them from my other banners I've already got done. And you want to change this to JPEG. Now there is a ping file there if you'd rather do uh, graphic formats, but this one interchanges and there's nothing wrong with a ping. It will work, but sometimes the resolution isn't as good, so I always use a JPEG. And when I click Save, it will ask me if I want all the slides in this bundle saved or just one. Sometimes I do just one if I'm reaching to get a, a different color real quick, but for this purposes, we're going to do all slides. And when we do all slides, what happened is when we look at our hard drive to our folder, that it saved and it probably saved them in documents yes but if you want to change it to downloads just before you save make sure you change in um, where it goes so for instance if I click file save as right here I need to make sure which folder I'm putting that in I can put it in the download folder I can put it on PC you just got to make sure that you know where the file is going so you can retrieve it later so it's in our document folder and as you can see, it, it saved each one of them individually. And it did not put them in a zip drive, so I don't have to extract them. They're just on my hard drive under folder in the blue document folder. As you see, it's in a folder, not a zip. So now that we've got them in a folder, I go back and I rename them. Let me enlarge them so I can read them. And I would rename this one sorry I opened it instead I would rename this one by right clicking and click rename and I would do this blue HDR for the header course overview and I rename each one of those the same way blue HDR underscore calendar. Now the first time you create them you will have a little time spent in them but once you get them all created it's real easy to get different colors and I'll show you how quick that is. HDR for header. These I label and I took this uh, cue from the um, KCPS system the way they done theirs. BDY watch this uh, two more here I'm trying to hurry a little bit to not waste time on renaming but you get the picture of how it works and then it puts them in alphabetical order for you rename blue body watch this not it really helps you to stay organized and as you can see there I just put blue in cap I didn't put body because I only use that at the end of every page so now that we got them renamed we'll leave the hard drive for a minute and I'm gonna minimize this and we're gonna go to a course you have a your, your start your module and you have you're going to create a document so you start you create your learning module and then you're going to create 
a folder or document inside that because you're going to give an assignment. So we're going to put this as just a demo document and add content. A lot of people wants to add their banners this way and that's fine but I'll show you the difference. We'll add one this way. And you'll need to mark the image. You don't want to download this because it's just an image. So you have no other choice than to mark it as a decorative image. And what happens there, and let's click Save. And let's do one from OneDrive. So this is ADA compliant because it's marked as a decorative image. But screen readers, let's just put some directions down here. Do watch the video and complete the chapter reading. So why we're using the large header banner is at the top. So if we wanted to use the end banner, so we've inserted a banner from the hard drive. So now let's insert one from the uh, OneDrive, and I'll show you the difference. So let's back up here, and let's go to my banners, and I'm going to upload the um, blue banners. Okay, and I'm going to need to make a new folder. So what I would do now is um, select all of these and move them to my folder. So now let's go back to our Ultra Core shell, and I'm going to add one from my storage. And the reason I use OneDrive after I create them is because I can create them anywhere. If I created these on my personal um, computer at home and then I went to work and had to work, I wouldn't have access to them until I, unless I carried that computer around. So now here's why you had them in order. You know all your bodies are here, your end caps here, and all your headers here. Well, I'm looking for a body one now um, to put underneath my assignment because I've already got my header in my ultra shell. Now here's the difference from doing them from attachment and OneDrive as, as an image. You can see it makes the attachment makes it much shorter and that's okay but as long as you do an attachment make sure you do attachment throughout your course so all your banners are in line with each other or if you do it from OneDrive, make sure they're all in OneDrive. So I'm going to refresh this just a minute to see if it gives us an ADA compliant warning. Okay, this one's ADA compliant because we marked it decorative. This one isn't, so what we need to do is select here and we need to put simply a white banner with blue stripe labeled do this and once you get that done and click save it gives you a hundred percent score and now they're ADA compliant now you might say well I don't want to have to fool with ADA compliant issues but you will you can get away with this being decorative but think about the student that's having to use the ADA tool and this just says decorative image, directions, watch the video, and complete the chapter readings. That might be fine, but the student, but the person that the instructor that's using this, it's going to read a blue and white banner labeled do this. So it gives that student a description of what that image is. This one does not. This one just says decorative image. That's it. Now, as you notice, when I was creating these in PowerPoint, I didn't worry about uh, doing alternate text on this, on this, on this, because 
what happens is once you save them as an image, you're going to do your ADA compliant here or should, and you don't have to label them. And you notice here I didn't say with a BCTC logo. You can do that if you want to, but as long as you've got a full description in there telling the student what that image is about, that's fine. You don't have to make it lengthy. You don't have to describe it, you know, a two by three banner, solid white, blue stripe in the middle with a circle BCTC that's labeled do this. They don't really need that much graphic information. You want to keep it short and sweet. As long as it's ADA compliant and you get 100% score, that's good. But you can see the difference. And I just always just take them as an image instead of attachment. Um, attachment, you can edit and you can put thing, your directions and stuff down here to do that. But then you've got everything together. Um, for editing issues, I like to keep my content separate from my headers just because it makes it easier. And when I do do my content, you want to break it up. You want chunks of information. Students learn better with chunks instead of just a big long list that they have to read through and their eyes gets lost in the reading. That's why you want small bits and pieces. You're also continuing the chunking process. So that's the difference. Let, uh, I'm going to delete this one. As you can see, it's real easy to delete. And I'm going to go retrieve the one from my OneDrive, maybe. There we go. Let me refresh the document. Sometimes that helps. So you know if it ever works on you a little bit, refresh your screen and try it again. You know, technology is only as good as it, as it is when it's working <laughs> correctly. So I go into my banner folder, my demo blue. And see how easy it was for me to pick, go right to my headers, because that's no, what I know I was working with, and put it in there. And I want to show you how it lines up with the do it banner. And sometimes you have to wait a little bit for that um, ADA to pop up. And what I do with my headers is um, blue and white banner labeled assignment and it's that easy and then you got your do this you got your do this content information um, just to speed up time and you maybe got watch this and you're going to put your videos and then you're going to do at the end of every page, make sure you have an end cap to let students know. Now, I believe the KCTC um, standard ones has a light bulb for their end cap. And I kind of think of the light bulb as a hint or a new idea. And I just didn't think that that signified end. So I changed mine to a check mark. But you can use the standard one if you want to. That's perfectly fine. I'm not saying you can't. Um, always refresh your screen, check your ADA compliant uh, score meter there to make sure that you are in compliant before you leave your page. And as you can see, you just get a neat overall um, look to your course. So that page is ADA compliant. It's really neat for the students to be able to follow. And it's really good, like when you're doing a start here module with all your course overview, course calendar stuff, to make it that way. It's really neat. It's really uh, cool to do. So I told you earlier that once you get your first set done, that the others will be very simple. And they are. And here's how they can be. You simply click on this one and you just choose a different color that you want. I usually do right click instead of going up here and hunting for shape and fill, but it's right here if you want to. But I'll right click on the colors and I'll change my fill to maybe 
I want um, dark blue and always change your outline colors. I usually do no outline and make sure you change your outline color on your circle too because it will also have its own shape, feel, and color. Okay, and then once you do that, you simply just have to select each one. And if you'll notice, that color is already there. And you just have to choose it. You don't have to relabel. You just simply have to choose your same color because you're going to use the same labels in all the others. You see how quick you, you're just you're changing a whole new um, section. So you've got another one for another course. Say you're having four math courses, and you're teaching them individually instead of merged. And you can do different colors for um, different ones. Now, when you do your in, and you change that, make sure that you also change your check mark. So make sure that you also do that. So then I could label this one, File, Save As, make sure if it's going to document, you know where to treat it, and I could put Dark Blue Banner, and for my purposes, I'm going to put Demo, so I know it's ones I'm doing, change it to a JPEG or a PNG, and then Save, and Save All Slides. Now, I want to show you an uh, example why I would use the um, save one image. And the reason I would save one image is I was uh, I had blue, I had green, I had purple, and I had yellow already created and orange. And I was working in my orange when I'm like, well, I forgot to use that label. I could come over here real quick and get me an orange one to match my other orange colors that I already created. I was trying to find a pretty orange. And then I could really quickly save as, make sure it's orange. And for my purposes, I'm putting demo orange. And changing it to JPEG real quick. And click save. And I want just this one slide. So what happens is when I go to my hard drive, and I look in my documents because that's where it said it put it. There it is. It's individually. It's not in a folder because I just done that one individual banner. Then I can upload it to my OneDrive orange ones later, or I can go ahead and get it in my course that I was working on. So that's why you would do a um, one, only one slide. As you see, it only picked this one right here for me. I'll change that one back. So that's how you create customized banners and your own images and logos. Now, I will show you one other thing if it's something that you want to play with is the Bitmoji extension. Um, you, If you've never worked with Bitmoji, it's kind of fun. I can type in anything. I can put course overview here and it will give me images that are labeled course overview. Even if it doesn't find one, it'll take one of my um, avatars and it will put it with course image that I can use in my PowerPoint. Now to use Bitmoji in your PowerPoint you will need to work with them you will need to save your PowerPoint in a working PowerPoint in OneDrive because otherwise in the app it doesn't let you have the images. Now you can go to this and you can download and save all the images but once I have all my banners created and I upload them to OneDrive if I didn't want to use this icon right here and by the way I took this and put this on that download to get the background off of it and that's this is the standard uh, icon that you see on all the KCTC banners that um, if you ask for banner download, this is what's on there. So if I wanted to replace that with a Bitmoji, you go to Bitmoji, you download it, install it, and it adds it as extension. And I've got policies here. So let's just do policies. 
and I select them and just pull them down what they look like. Um, I did some for my personalization. As you can see, I've got 55 labels. And this is what the um, Bitmojis ones look like. And it just gives you a personalized touch uh, for your students, especially an online student that doesn't get to see you face to face or get to realize what your personality is. Or maybe it breaks the ice a little bit and the student goes, oh, wow, they use avatars and they'll have something in common with you, maybe. But like I said, um, if you notice back here, I had learned, um, finished, end, and done. And then I also have a check mark. If I use the one done, I need to do it all the way through my course. If I use the one end, I need to use it. If I use finish, do finish. Don't, um, like I said earlier, don't, don't use different ones. Be consistent throughout your course. And also, when you start creating these banners, don't uh, put red, blue, green, and yellow on the same page. I mean, I know that's pretty and it's bright, it's cheerful that isn't very appealing to the students. Um, it sometimes, you know, it's confusing when there's too much on the page. So you want to be clear, you want to be chunked, you want to have a good overall look. Okay, as I said earlier, I'll show you what I'm talking about on the KCTCS standard banners. In your original sandbox shell that you got to train with, they had an ultra sandbox um, module and I simply went and into my sandbox shell and into the content course shell you'll see banner images for the course link I simply copied that into my course that I was working with hopefully it won't take too long where it was just one item Sometimes if we refresh, it uh, will be there by that time. Okay, there they are. So once I open this up, it takes me to the online version of those. And as you can see, I can check which ones I want. And let's just do gray here. And then I can download those. And those download to my hard drive and it does download them into a zip file so once I open up my hard drive go to my downloads because that's where it downloaded them and you'll see a OneDrive zip file when you open that up you will need to extract them to be able to use them but this is where I labeled all mine from. I kind of labeled them to match those because it's got all the titles that they thought that you would need to start uh, designing a course and I think there's 45 of them and like I say I changed the end cap and I might have added one or two for myself but you don't want to get too crazy with them and have every little individual thing keep it as chunked as possible because they have a rubric review they have about anything that you can uh, name I changed maybe the light bulb to the check mark and added it uh, I also kept the light bulb too because if I passed it on to someone else, I wanted them to be able to have the same layout as the, uh, the original started out with. And as you see, it's got office airs and etiquette. So it, it pretty much has everything that you need uh, in those shells. You can, once you extract them by selecting this, you can upload those into your OneDrive and have a gray folder. Uh, Let's go back and you'll have a blue folder automatically made, a gold folder, gray folder, green folder, and a red folder. I do caution on the red folder. You, you can use red. It's just typically um, it's a red flag for ADA because of uh, color issues. Red is just frowned upon for some reason with ADA, so I just kind of stay away from it. But they are created and they are there to use. And they are on our online SharePoint. So 
you can also access them there and not have to go through a sandbox shell. But the sandbox shells where I seen them and downloaded them. And as you can see, it's in the document library. So yeah, there is uh, one, two, three, four, five sets of folders already used for banners that you can have access to. And like I said, that's where I labeled, I named all mine from to be consistent. So that is how um, you create a custom banner for Ultra Course. And I hope you learned something from this and especially some ADA uh, compliant is issues resolved. And if you need anything, um, you can email me at tracer.wooten at kctcs.edu. And I will be happy to help you answer any questions that you might have, or we could do a one-on-one -on -one team, and I can walk you through these steps. It's really simple. It's really easy. Uh, it's fun to do. So enjoy. Create those personalized courses. Uh, chunk information for your students, and keep your course and overall appealing eye view for them. Thank you. Have a great day.